British football is a likeable sport and has been for a number of years. But nowadays, young people seem to be concerned about foreign ownership over English football clubs. So why are so many foreign owners buying English teams and using them? What are the effects of foreign ownership? That's what we're here to find out. Foreign ownership, a lot of the guys are in it for just money and just project it like a business and not really so worried about the youth development, about the young players coming through, especially the young British players in particular. There are positives, I think it brings a lot of investment over here. Um, I think it brings a lot of talent and culture from other sides. You've got some brilliant footballers in the Premier League at the moment. You know, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of young good players, you know, that, that have been in the game and they haven't gone as far as they could have perhaps, you know what I mean? And I, I don't know if that's directly because of foreign ownership or they weren't good enough, but you know, they're still playing at a high level and I think they're just as good as some of the players that are out there now. There are positives to come from it and there are very strong negatives. Um, let me start with the positive because I'm a very optimistic person. Um, the positives is that it's made football international. It's made the local league international. Premier League is the most watched league in the world on television, um, with, with live audiences, um, and that comes from money. Money from mainly from um, external foreign owners who've come in, put money, and made it more glamorous. The other benefit of it is that there is now in the 80s and 90s when Italian league attracted the best players. That's no more. The best players want to play in the Premiership now. For the challenge, for the money, for the glamour, for the international audience. And that's all has one or two things to do with foreign ownership. On the downside, foreign ownership has meant that real owners of the football clubs, the, the traditional ownership of football club management and, and stuff, have changed. And the result is that in the past, when the supporters and, and a few local businessmen used to own clubs with a passion, with money, with with, with a lot of enthusiasm, you know, win or lose, they're still supporters. That's gone. And what has happened is that the international foreign investors who have come in don't have the real passion, the real interest of the club at heart. For them, it's either a huge investment, which they can sell on later and make more money, or it is a pet project, like the Abramovich. He doesn't want to make money from it, but for him, it's like buying gladiators to, to fight for him and entertain him. And, and, and that means that the day he stops enjoying it, he will walk away. Managers don't have the time anymore to develop players, except like Asim Benga, but even that, he, he hasn't won a, a trophy in five years. That tells you something. He's developed players and sold them on. However, he hasn't won anything. So the pressure of the foreign owners who now want returns on their investment or want glamorous players, uh, so that they can get glamorous money and glamorous um, sponsorship deals. Because of that pressure, the managers are now allowed to develop young players. The shake at Manchester City is not to make money. It's like a pet project. And the money that they spend on the club is nothing compared to the fortune they have. So that's one of the other, fo one of the other formulas. But however way you look at it, these people don't have the heart of the club um, like the supporters. So it means that if the results don't go right, you know, they, they don't get the excitement they crave, even though they're winning games like they did with Mourinho and, and Abramovich. They were winning games, winning trophies, but it wasn't entertained. So he said, you know what, get me a coach that will entertain me. Because I bought this club to entertain myself. And that's what happens. So his heart is not there. He doesn't think what's best for the club. He thinks what's best for me. And, and, and as so long as these people continue to be there without the network of local supporters being the backbone of the football club, so long will they continue. Well, with anything, there's always pros and cons. I mean, the positives of um, football ownership have been we've seen some of the best players in the world, we've been able to bring some of the best players in the world over to the Premier League. Uh, we've seen some fantastic football over the last couple of years, particularly from Chelsea, who, of course, are owned by Roman Abramovich uh, and also from Manchester United, owned, of course, by the Glazers of America. Uh, and really, I mean, the influx of money which they bring in uh, can of course be positive. Now the downside is when the opposite occurs. Uh, now if, for example, the situation at Portsmouth, uh, where there a whole multitude of owners going in and out there, uh, if someone comes in uh, and they're borrowing money to put into the club, 
there's an instant problem there because that's not financial stability. That's loaning off someone else to put into the business, uh, which of course has ramifications later down the line, as we've seen with Portsmouth. So as I say, with everything, uh, there are pros and cons, and certainly that's the case with foreign ownership. I think football is still a game for the masses. Um, you see that in the media, you see the frenzy that we have uh, with the World Cup coming up. So I think football is very much a game of the people and always will be, uh, no matter who comes to own whichever club in whichever place. Uh, at the end of the day, if um, the, the, the masses, per se, as you say, the people, if they don't feel the crowds and they don't feel the stadiums, um, then we haven't got a game of football. It's as simple as that. We can't pay the players' wages. Uh, we can't fund other things in the community which these football clubs do. Uh, and that's another thing. I mean, you say that about football, footballers and football clubs just entertaining the, the noble reach. Uh, but actually, you do often see in the news a lot of football players working very closely with their local communities. So I think to say that football's purely a game for the upper classes is totally untrue to be honest. The quality of the Premier League is so high now that you really have to be exceptional. You literally have to be a Steven Gerrard nowadays or a James Milner. I mean, I can only see it as a positive thing uh, because that means that it will be the very best English players coming through. Fair enough, it's harder, um, but what's so wrong with putting in more effort and trying to reach that goal? If I was a young player now, I'd be looking at it thinking I want to be the best. So I'd be out there trying to be the best rather than complaining about all oh, these foreigners come over and take all our jobs and there, tear, tear. I mean, we should just strive you to sort of reach for the top and be the best player you can be. It seems that foreign ownership has given English players an international audience on one hand and on the other hand has disadvantaged young English players from making it into the Premier League. So is foreign ownership good or bad for English football? Well, it's up to the fans to decide.